So Reed Pond uh, is, was discovered to hold this rare species called blueback trout. Uh, it was around the 50s or so that different reports were coming into the state biologists of strange looking brook trout. And they looked into it and they realized what they had was these relic populations of, um, well, it's called Arctic char. And Arctic char is all around the northern hemisphere, uh, the Arctic, the polar regions, and they're a sea run char species. Um, the blueback trout is the equivalent of a landlocked Arctic char. So we call them blueback, and, and, and it's been known to be in Reed Pond and 13 other ponds in the state, um, you know, for, for since the last ice age. Um, <clears throat> actually, 12 ponds, and then there are two additional ponds that have been, uh, the blueback have been introduced to by the state. So along about 1990 or so, it was discovered by Bradford Camps that there were smelt that had been introduced, probably because it was legal to fish with smelt, and at the end of the day, what do you do with your bait? And you pour your bucket in because wouldn't that be good for the fish? Um, so unfortunately, those smelt took off and became the dominant species. And it's hard to imagine like a three-inch fish becoming the dominant species, but they, they feed in a giant school and they scoop up all of the zooplankton and it just made it impossible for the young fish to rise through the ranks uh, at Reed Pond. So we were through the 90s and... Uh, we bought Bradford Camps in 1996, and that was the tail end of the available fish to catch at Reed Pond. And the population was completely crashing and in dire need, a uh, dire chance of losing that blueback population and the brook trout populations. When we realized we had smelt in Reed Pond and we had this problem, we were all heads were trying to come up with different solutions. And there were basically four on the table. One, do nothing, which was basically to just watch the population collapse and say goodbye to the blueback of Reed Pond and the brook trout and have a great smelt pond. Uh, another was to introduce annually mature brook trout, which would feed on the smelt, and it would be a great brook trout fishery feeding on smelt, and that would probably work well as a stocked fishery. Another idea, a little bit of a long shot, was to get blue back from somewhere else, spawn them regularly, and put them back in with the brook trout, again, feeding on the smelt. Both of, all of those ideas would be leaving the smelt as the dominant species and the control species of reed pond. The long shot idea, the most genetically pure idea, the most idealistic idea, was to remove the species that were that were uh, uh, in Reed Pond, the blueback and the brook trout, the, the species we wanted to keep, get those out and spend a few years raising them in captivity and kill the pond with rotenone. And that was uh, the highest ideal, um, particularly because there are really only 12 ponds in Maine that have this aboriginal species of blueback trout. There's no other ponds in or waters in the lower 48. There are some in Alaska and there are Canada and northern Russia, but there are no other ponds in Maine. So this is a very special to the United States population of these fish. They're beautiful. They grow to wonderful three, four, five pound size fish. As idealists in the fishing world, we care about these uh, these older populations or these original populations that may be struggling and we, we just have this special jewel of a place of Reed Pond that, that has the capacity of holding these fish for generations and generations if we care for it. And we, we, we being myself and Bradford Camps and the people who come to Bradford Camps and the biologist Frank Frost and the Nature Conservancy, and several other key players. But we all decided that we would corral our resources and corral our energies and put it towards saving that strain of blueback 
and that strain of brook trout. And lo and behold, that care and that love and that effort has paid off. So the idea was spawned to, uh, to collect as many brook trout and blueback out of the pond as we could, build a hatchery system separate only to them in uh, a nearby town and raise captive uh, char and captive brook trout. Then kill the pond. Once those fish are removed, we would kill the pond with a piscicide called rotenone. It's a well-known piscicide that blocks the flow of oxygen uh, across the gills and effectively kills all the fish in the pond, which would eradicate the smelt. And then we reintroduce that same strain that we had taken out without even intermixing with uh, hatchery brood brook trout or other blueback from another pond. It was a real, real long shot of a plan. It required federal permits, state permits, landowner permission, a lot of grant writing. It required uh, Bradford Camps provided all free flight services and use of our cabin on Reed. Uh, a, a building was built specifically for the hatchery uh, raising of the brook trout and the blueback. And, uh, and, and that process started around 2008. By 2010, <clears throat> almost or over three years of fishing, we had caught 12 blueback trout. So that's how close we were to losing the blueback population. Um, those 12 fish over the course of those three years were transformed into over a thousand blueback trout and many more brook trout. The brook trout were easier to, to spawn. The blueback took some learning uh, of how to actually spawn them in captivity. Uh, by 2011, we had reintroduced uh, uh, over a thousand blueback and we had subsequent annual reintroductions until by 2012 or 13, we had put back all the fish that we had spawned in captivity. That after having killed the pond in 2010. Um, so it and the so it was sort of congratulated as a success, but we weren't really willing to congratulate our success our su ourselves with the success of the project until we were convinced that we had seen spawning activity, a full cycle of the blueback and the brook trout. And we did finally have evidence of young spawn, very successful spawning activity in 2016 and 17. So we then gave each other a handshake and for a job well done, it was the largest reclamation project of any pond the state of Maine has ever done. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, it's, and it's so far working and, uh, and, and it's, you know, to, to the great, uh, uh, congratulations of Frank Frost, our biologist who spearheaded the project, um, and, uh, and several other donors, and the landowner, Nature Conservancy. And Gary Picard was the tireless uh, hatchery uh, technician who spent countless hours feeding the fish, turning eggs over to make sure there was a successful hatch, and learning actually the nuances of hatching blueback trout in captivity, which I think had never been done before. So uh, yeah, it was a great conglomeration uh, uh, with, with a fair degree of uh, sort of naysayers that also had to be fought. There were many people who thought that this was a, too long of a shot and we were going to waste our time and people's money, but it paid off.